Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me as I explore the global, international, wide world of pens. And we see two interesting woven wicker containers. And there might be some of you out there, I know at least one, who recognize these because these were loaned to me by a fellow YouTube viewer who happens to live in New Jersey, about an hour's drive away. He said, I have these pens, would you like to review them? I said, absolutely. A pen that had not been on my radar at all until this time. So this is how they ship, obviously in some other container. Just comes off, and we'll see a spare nib, which is a medium. This gentleman likes extra fines. So it's just wrapped in a bubble wrap, and we see a Kasama Una. So they basically make two pens, an Una and a Tela, and I have each of those in this same Ultec resin that the founder and the original idea behind uh, Kasama Pens was a doctor, a radiologist, oncologist. So this is a material that's used in medical. NASA uses it, or so everybody said, and it's fairly indestructible. It is definitely a nice color. The matte finish is definitely nice. It feels good in the hand. The cap comes off with a little over one turn. And we'll see a pen that fits okay without being posted. That section has a pretty sharp hourglass design to it. And there's a big flare out at the end well before the threads. So you're kind of forced into one spot, even though you can move your fingers around easily, which is what I like. And for those that like to post, it posts great. It posts deep. It posts securely. And it doesn't change the balance much. It's certainly a pen that I could easily write with post-it. Yes, these pens are crab and turntable worthy. It may not show off a lot of detail, but hopefully you'll get an idea of what these two pens are like. The Talia is definitely the larger pen. We'll give you all the dimensions comparing the two pens. And the Una is smaller, and they feel that way in the hand. I like to play with light, so let's take out one source of light. Let the camera adjust. Because when you get a pen in your hand, and it may or may not resemble or look like the pen that you bought, it's probably because of the lighting that was used when the pen was photographed. So we're going to cut some other lights out and let the camera adjust. And hopefully that helps you see this color better, see the design better, and understand the pen better. Here we have a familiar shot of the Una. Partially disassembled, and I'm not going to pull the nib and feet out. It's just a standard Yovo nib assembly. This is just nice. That's all I can say. Fit and finish. Nice thick walls. Very substantial pen. Last a lifetime. Threading's done extremely well. All the tolerances are very, very good in this pen. And uh, Yovo does brand the bottom of their nibs with the size, which is a good thing. And there's that logo that Customa is known for. And a standard lower-end Schmidt converter, which most German pens seem to use. Standard international, so you got a lot of options if you'd wanted to make a change. So I'm not going to take apart the Talia because it's basically the same pen same general design with some slight changes in the dimensions and that affects how it feels when you write with it which we'll look at a little later. So this pen uh, begs the question can it be eyedroppered and the answer is definitely. 
So the classic way is you unscrew the barrel from the section, you fill the barrel with ink and then, you know, silicone grease threads, maybe put an O-ring there if you want, and then reassemble it. But with this design, you're only going to get half the barrel full of ink. So what I would do is assemble the barrel, silicone grease, whatever you want to do to make certain that is sealed, and then fill it here after you remove the nib assembly. So that way you'll get a full barrel full of ink, which I guess is close to four milliliters and will last you a long time. So I drop her away if you want to. Well, these pens have been inked up for a few days and I've had a good opportunity to become acquainted with writing with these two pens. And one thing that makes this hard to evaluate is the nibs are Yovo nibs, so that's not something that Cosima has anything to do with. They might tune the nib or they might just make certain that it writes. The nib in the Una has been ground by Mark Bacchus into an Arabic grind, architect grind, and there's no comparison between these two nibs. And we'll see that in the writing sample. The other thing to keep in mind is that these are both two unique pens. They have a unique feel to them. This design, I consider it unique, one of a kind. And you have two different versions of it, basically two different sizes and not a real price differential. So if you like a larger pen, go for the Talia. If you like a smaller pen, go for the Una. But it's not a, to me, not a significant difference. They both write similarly as far as feeling the hand goes. The Una does take a few more turns to get the cap off. You know, just remember to hold the, the barrel near the cap when you unscrew the cap or else you unscrew the barrel. So it takes about one and three quarter turns and the Talia takes less turns, about one turn. And like I said, if you don't do that, you can just unscrew the barrel. But you know, after you have that happen a few times, you can pretty much uh, remember to do it. This section's a little smaller. I, I've given you dimensions so you can put those in perspective. You know, both number six size nibs. So the Talia, where that major curvature is, is a little bit further away. So if you like being further away from the paper when you're writing, then the Talia was a pen for you. If you like to have your fingers be a little bit closer to the paper, then the Una is a better selection. I mean, this section is comfortable for me. Both of these sections are comfortable. If I had to choose one, even though the Una is slightly smaller in diameter, I just like the way that it's done. The transition as you go up from the section to the other part of the section, which mostly would be the barrel, is nice and smooth. This one has a nice edge to it. It's not a sharp edge or whatever, but you do notice it. And I like to move my fingers around a little bit. It's easier to move them around on the Una than it is on the Talia. So we're going to see if we can... Look closely at the differences between these two nibs. So I'm trying to show you these two nibs. So the one on the left, which is the extra fine, was ground by Mark Bacchus into what is called a blade turk. We'll show you how that's defined by Mark. And the one on the right is just your standard Yovo fine. This difference is not very discernible from the visuals, at least from my eyes. Maybe you can see something that I don't see, but, you know, they both look like pretty fine nibs. And this is one of the reasons why I'm reluctant to do any grinding, because I can't look at a nib and say, ah, this is how it's going to write. Because when I write with these, after looking at them, it just doesn't come across as I expect it would. So let's put some ink to paper. Ink. So what ink to put in, this called out to me. I haven't used it in the last couple months. There's still a decent amount left. 
And then like the palm green, one of the other six of these Colors of Nature bottles that I got on Amazon at a great price, nothing is growing in this, no sludge. The color card just shows a nice brown, kind of a little bit on the yellow side. These inks are not known for sheen. I do have two chromatographies, which I think are very interesting to look at. The one on the left here is that standard filter paper one. And the one on the right, this is actually chromatography paper that I bought on Amazon a while ago. And it definitely shows the variations in color. No water resistance whatsoever. I mean, this thing just ran away from the water. Here, I think I was too close to the bottom, so the water kind of moved the ink in both directions. The filter paper did show a nice little blue there at the very top, where here it's just a very dark, you can see a little bit of blue there, but mostly some yellows, some reds, makes up a brown. Well, maybe you can hear it, but there's a lot of feedback on this Yovo fine steel nib. It's not something I find pleasurable. And this is where I just uh, find it very confusing that some people just love Yovo nibs, hate other nibs. And I, in my experience, and I've had a number of Yovo nibs from a number of different pens, and I've had a number of Bach nibs on a number of different pens, and I prefer Bach. Uh, but to each their own. So in this comparison, this extra fine ground nib just blows away the fine steel nib. It feels much better on the piece of paper. It gives you some line variation, but not a lot. It just feels better. And the Turk blade should, you know, to me, should have more variation. So if you hold it up 90 degrees and you do horizontals and you do verticals, they're pretty much the same. If you hold it down at a low angle and do the horizontals and the verticals, it's a little wider. But again, this is a fine nib from a person who likes really fine nibs and a grinder who's ground a lot of nibs for this person. So, like I said, I really like this extra fine nib and I'm not an extra fine person. I prefer a nice juicier, wetter nib, but a lot of times a fine nib is exactly what you need depending upon the writing circumstances and, and what you're doing. So I think it's time to sum up these two pens and let's do that. Well, the first thing you got to be aware of is no roll stops, no clip. So these pens will roll away if you don't do something to stop them. Yes, 
this desk has a little bit of a slope to it. But I have a lot of pens like this, so that's not an issue for me, and I don't put pens in a pocket. If I carry them around, they're in a pen sleeve or pen case, and you know, in a briefcase or a backpack, so I'm not that concerned about having a clip. These are two unique pens. These are two pens that are very limited supply. You know, they're made by a very small company in the Philippines with a few employees, and they're very, very socially active. So if these pens you're interested in, look them up on Instagram. I'm pretty certain they're on Facebook too. I'll put links in my video description so you can follow up on them. And Mark Bacchus also occasionally sells these pens when he gets them. And there's waiting lists, so you just need to jump on a waiting list and cross your fingers. And eventually, you'll get a pen. I don't know how long it could be. Months, probably. Hopefully not. Years. I like the pens. I like the pens for the same reason the person who lent me these pens likes them. Is Number one, they write well. They feel good in the hand, and they're very different, and they're indestructible. You know, if you're working in a blue-collar environment, hard-hat environment, and you like to use your fountain pens, these certainly would work well in that environment. But from my view, a lot of pens would work in that environment. You could get a Keras Customs pen made out of metal, which would be less money than this, Bach nibs instead of Yovo, but you could swap it out with a Yovo if you wanted to. But, you know, I'm, I prefer the box, especially the ones I get from uh, Keras pens. You could also get some metal Chinese pens, which to me is what I would do if I was in an environment where the pen could get broken, lost, borrowed, and not returned, or whatever could happen to have that pen no longer be in your possession or no longer be in working order. What I haven't done is I haven't rated these pens. So we're going to take the Una because I enjoy writing with that the best. So you can un uncap it with one hand. Let's come in here. Hopefully you have a number in your mind and let's see how close it comes to my number. And I'm rating the pens, not the nib. So I'm going to rate it as a 9.7. It gets two checks for the interesting design, functional, aesthetically good. It gets two checks for the material. Again, there's only two people making pens out of this material now, so you're limited. And they both have very limited supply. And it gets just one check for that wow, unique... Ah, feature. So that's why it gets a 9.7. Why doesn't it get a 10? To me, the Yovo nib. That's just my personal preference. I'm not a fan of uh, Yovo nibs. I, I don't prefer them over any other nibs. And also the fact that it uses a lower end converter. Very minor points, but enough to knock it down. So it's not a 10 in my book. We've come to the end of this review. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you got to see a pen that is kind of rare. There are a fair number of reviews on YouTube, and I did watch most of them, and I found them interesting. I think the other reviewers like the pen even more than I did, but that's, you know, I call them like I see them. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying your pens. Hopefully you're purchasing wisely, getting value for your hard-earned dollars. And I also hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy so you can enjoy your pens, enjoy putting ink on paper. This is the end of this video. I got a bunch more in the pipe, so stay tuned. They'll be available shortly. Bye. See you soon. Yeah, nib not on paper.